Coming up is WWE in hot water with their TV partners over AEW CM Punk signing, the backstage reaction to Daniel Bryan ditching them for the competition, and Vince's unfiltered thoughts on AEW. So give the old subscribe button a bash if you want to support WrestleTalk and be delivered delicious, delectable morsels of wrestling news straight to your subscription feed. Support WrestleTalk! So this week's AEW was Fight for the Fall and it managed to drag in a healthy 1.108 million viewers to hear five or six different teasers for CM Punk joining the company and see Chris Jericho take on Deathmatch King Nick Gage in what AEW dubbed a no rules match. And with absolutely no rules whatsoever, the pair went after each other with an entire assortment of weaponry, busting a whole bunch of light tubes in the process and carving up each other's heads with pizza cutters. So that's how they make pepperoni. And at one point as Gage was taking some chunks out of Jez with the aforementioned cutter, a mighty meaty move if you ask me, the show cut to commercial and the very first thing people saw was a pizza cutter gliding over a Domino's pizza in an advert. And you're gonna have to judge for yourself which of those looked the most appetizing, but fans couldn't help but be wowed by the sweet serendipity of the two things back to back. And I can tell you which red sauce I am more interested in. However, Domino's weren't best pleased to essentially be outed as some kind of Soylent Green style outfit on national television, as the placing of the advert is enough to put you off that basic margarita for life. Domino's company spokeswoman Jenny Foray Capetco told Front Office Sports that they had not been informed of the violent match prior to the show airing and would be assessing their advertising presence on AEW. She said Domino's was not involved nor had any foreknowledge of the gory scene on the AEW Dynamite main event. We share the concerns expressed about this incident and the content of this TV 14 rated program and are assessing our advertising presence on it going forward. I mean, at least just get the pizza cutter out of the Papa John's box or something, jeez. But I mean, if advertisers are going to threaten to pull out of the show because of the content, it might mean that AEW has to reassess the sort of matches that they are putting on. Now on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer had said that Jericho had likely pitched this match after narrating Dark Side of the Ring, which featured Nick Gage as one of the subjects of its episodes. Meltzer also noted that Tony Khan had informed TNT about the match in advance, so despite all the drama surrounding it, it's unlikely they're gonna get into too much trouble and they definitely won't be dropped from TV following the brutal bout because everyone was made aware except Domino's. One man thoroughly unimpressed with all of that blood and guts nonsense though is Mr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Because yesterday was WWE's second quarter earnings call and PW Insider revealed that during the conference call, McMahon was asked about his thoughts on AEW investing in all of this talent. All of this talent that WWE released quite recently. Now, it may say that he didn't see AE dub as competition in the same way he saw WCW back in the day. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful, Vince said, Vince McMahon says he isn't sure what AEW's plans are and wouldn't consider them competition in the way WCW was back in the day. He doesn't consider this competition the way Ted Turner came at WWF with all of their assets. President Nick Khan also waded into the debate saying, according to SRS, he and WWE don't look at any specific organizations as competition when asked about AEW. They see sleep and every form of entertainment as competition. Vince also added this, I'm not sure where their investments are, where it comes to their talent, perhaps we could give them some more. Which, I don't know, sort of sounds like he's joking about WWE releases or burning AEW for signing all of the WWE cast-offs. It could also just be Vince asking Nick Khan to add more colour to their views on AEW as McMahon hasn't really been answering questions during the Q&A portions of these calls recently, according to people who've been on them. Sean also tried to clear it up on his Twitter saying that Vince's volume is notoriously quiet on these calls, so it's hard to add proper context, but it could also be construed as Vince saying, I'm not so sure what their investments are as far as talent is concerned, full stop. Perhaps we can give them some more which might be more in dressing Nick Khan. Now, obviously, WWE and AEW are no longer competing on the same night of the week like WWF and WCW were back in the day. And I would argue that they never properly competed like that as NXT is technically WWE's C-show. But with the advent of Rampage in August, there is going to be a bit of head-to-head -head on Friday nights, which feels a lot closer to the old WCW days. And there's also the whole competition of signing talent which is a game that both WWE and AEW are playing. Because as AEW approach the end of their third year of operation, the question comes up, what will people do 
when their contracts expire. Now, Andrew Zarian on the Mat Men podcast was asked about this and confirmed the possibility that some of AEW's early signees may be looking to move to pastures new. He said, we're approaching year three now of AEW, so some of these contracts are ending. I can tell you that WWE has their eyes on a lot of these guys and they would love to have them back. Some of them, they would have them back, but others they would love to just have. Brian Pillman Jr. is a name that they would love to have. And there are things like contract extensions to consider that might have been signed quietly, but you can see it making sense because with AEW's roster growing all the time, as is necessary for the level of expansion they are going to have with Rampage, but the more acts that they have, the easier it could be for talent to feel lost in the shuffle. And so if Vinnie Mac comes calling saying, we're going to push you to the moon and he's got his checkbook out, what are you going to do? Now, obviously, a big old pay packet only gets you so far, and it certainly didn't bring back CM Punk into the fold if all of the rumours are to be believed. CM Punk to AEW, confirm. And while backstage reports suggest that Vince and the management don't see Punk going to AEW as a big loss, that is not necessarily the case for their TV partners. Andrew Zarian on Mat Men said that the networks were surprised that the promotion was able to sign Punk, saying WWE's network partners are shocked AEW is pulling off the CM Punk deal. The partners are shocked because they are not big wrestling fans. They only know names, and when they hear a name like that, they wonder why they would let him go. They really don't know the interworkings, and of course, they are shocked. There's a lot of stuff going on with the partners. Because yeah, WWE might have the attitude of let him go and be their headache, but there's no denying that Punk's name is the one chanted at every single wrestling show, which networks are going to take notice of. Plus the fact that Phil Brooks has grown his presence outside of wrestling with comic books, MMA, acting, so he just has a bit more mainstream appeal, which the networks are going to get. It's not like John Cena, The Rock, mainstream, mainstream, but it is enough, certainly, to be talked about. But of course it was previously reported by Ringside News that WWE had no interest in negotiating with Punk despite the potential of him joining AEW. Andrew Zarin had more on that too, saying, There's a lot of rumours that Vince is very upset and management is very angry. How could they let these two go? I think Daniel Bryan is the disappointment for them. CM Punk, not so much. There's no buzz that I'm hearing coming from the office side that we effed up by not signing Punk. There's a lot of people that think his stock is not what it would normally be. They think his UFC losses hurt him. A lot of people worked with him when he was very unhappy, and I think that's the memory that they have. I'm saying from management, not the talent. I think the talent knows what a big deal this is. And he said, a certain network is not very happy about the CM Punk stuff. WWE, they are not very concerned about CM Punk. They know it's a big get for AEW, but they were not negotiating to bring him him. However, I would say that Daniel Bryan is a big hit for them, because I would imagine that they thought Daniel Bryan was kind of a lifer. And according to those reports, they went out of their way to try and negotiate with New Japan just so they could keep him. And all that fell through, so this must feel like a little bit of a betrayal. They probably think they did quite all right by Daniel Bryan. I mean, eventually. But we could use the argument that people always use when WWE releases people. It's just business. Now, one of the weirder bits of news to come out this week was on the Wrestling Observer message board where someone claimed that they had heard from a 20-year reliable source that Brock Lesnar had signed a deal with a company outside of WWE. Obviously, as this has been so-and-so to AEW confirmed week, many people's minds jumped to All Elite. Thankfully, Andrew Zarian, who sponsored this episode's news, was able to clear things up on his podcast saying, I can tell you right now that Brock Lesnar has not signed with AEW. They have spoken maybe once in passing, nothing serious whatsoever. Everybody that I asked about this, they laughed. That's all I know. I can only tell you what they've said to me. I also know that Dave Meltzer said that it was not true. Brock has not already signed with AEW. He also pointed out that Brock is not currently signed with WWE, but they do want him back like a sort of drunken ex at 2am. Please, Brock. Please come back. You to me are everything. The sweetest song that I could sing. Oh, Lesnar. Oh, yes. And finally, some good news to round it off for those of us who have to stay up late to watch WWE pay-per-views, because during the Q2 earnings call, where it was revealed that WWE's revenue is up 19% year on year thanks to an increased media segment revenue, whatever that means. It was also suggested that the company would be running more Saturday events like the upcoming SummerSlam. Nick Khan reportedly said that they had spotted an opening in the sports calendar and they were using it to implement more Saturday pay-per-views. Which is great if you have to stay up and watch it late like if you're in the UK because it doesn't ruin your Monday at work. But hang, hang on, it means that we're going to have to work Sundays. Oh, f***.
Fightful Select is also reporting Punk has been a big topic of conversation backstage in AEW, with talents who haven't wrestled him before asking others what he's like to work with. In the same report, it was also noted that AEW had some interest in signing Punk since last year.